Welcome to this session of OpenMentor.net. We are going to see more variable types, arrays and if conditions in JavaScript. Here you see a new way of defining the variable with a specific data type. Usually we can simply say var n equal to 10. Straight away we can do this way, no harm. Depending upon what value you assign, the variable type will be automatically determined. If you want to specifically determine or say declare this is a number variable, you can say var n equal to new, this is an operator. This is this will create an object by the type number. There are number, string, boolean, array and object. We will see about arrays a little bit later. You can define number, string or boolean. Boolean will hold value true or false. Now. I am introducing but the effect is the same depending upon var n equal to 10 that should do but if you want to specifically have a coding practice to specify the data type also you can define number, string, boolean, array and object. Now I have assigned n equal to 10 I am using a simple if condition this is a relational operator less than greater than we will see that. If n is less than 15, document.write condition is true, else document.write condition is false. Now let me execute this particular script. You see it says condition is true because n is 10, so 10 is less than 15. Now let me reverse the condition, greater than. So this time n is greater than 15, 10 is not greater than 15, so it will come to the else part. Now if you come back, refresh the screen. Now it says condition is false because the condition yielded a false value. To see the if structure, if then within brackets condition, you need to definitely have these curly braces. This is the then part, the keyword else, if you need an else part, then curly braces. So within curly braces, you can include the statements for this then part. That means if this is true, this portion will be executed. If it is false, this portion will be executed the simple if condition. Now if I say variable b equal to say true. Now I can say if b equal to true two way I can write b. If you want to have equality operator you need to have two equal to's. So if b is equal to true then this part else this part. Let us go back and then this one refresh the screen condition is true or if it's a boolean variable you don't have to use this true or false you can simply give the variable this b itself will evaluate to true or false if this is true this portion will be executed let me purposefully make it false so you can simply say if b because it's a boolean variable it will automatically come to this else part let us go back refresh the screen now it says condition is false because the variable b holds the value false. So pretty much you can do uh, any of these uh, operators. The operators like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, then greater than or equal to. If you want to have equality, you have to use two equal to's. Not equal to means you have to use this exactly like in C language this exclamation mark and then equal to. These are called relational operators. And again, you can also have compound conditions within brackets. We will see those compound conditions a little bit later. This is a simple if condition. If I want to have multiple if then else part, for example, n equal to, uh, let, let us have some value, n equal to 3. So if you want to have if n equal to 1, you can say uh, write y and e. Else, I want to have one more condition. Else, if n equal to 2, document dot write 2. I can have one more thing. Else, if Okay, the condition, the syntax is else space if within bracket n equal to 3, then open brackets, you can cut and paste this portion. 
3 then you can have one final else part if everything else is not satisfied everything else is becoming false you can always say document dot write last chance okay so once you do this let us try to execute this so I have the main if condition else if some condition else if some condition finally another else condition let us try to execute this let me evaluate this it prints 3 because I have initialized n equal to 3 let me initialize n equal to 2 save come back refresh the screen it prints 2 how does it know because the based on the value of n the corresponding if is executed now let me give n equal to 7 it has to come to this else part because it is not equal to 1 2 or 3 let us go refresh now it says last chance so there are a series of if conditions if else if else if finally else since this is a nested if we can also write this using switch case statement let us write that switch case statement this is very similar to the C language look at this syntax instead of writing multiple if else if I use switch within brackets that variable name then case 1 that means case 1 means if n equal to 1 case 2 means if n equal to 2 you have to use a colon after that case then you can have your statements but every case must end with a break statement if the break is not given the subsequent case will also get evaluated or say executed so instead of writing multiple if else if you can use case 1 2 3 4 if nothing is matching come to the default portion we are putting even for the default put a break statement now let us execute this it says 1 because I have initialized n equal to 1 let us have n equal to 3 but under the 3 case statement let me remove this break let us see what happens I go back refresh the screen it prints 3 and 4 because under the case 3 statement we print 3 since we have not given break it also execute this so make sure you give a break statement after every case value if nothing is matching it will come to the default so switch case is nothing but another way of writing if else if else if else if else so these two are two of the major control structures to branch out based on some decision in uh, JavaScript now let us see how the arrays are used if you look at this particular variable declaration I have declared variable a equal to within square brackets a set of values separated by comma so this is nothing but an array you can declare this also like this where a equal to new of array you can declare like this and then say a of 0 equal to hello a of 1 equal to how the array index starts with 0 so the first element is denoted as a of 0 so this is the array name within use square brackets use comma well comma to separate the elements now I have declared 0 1 2 3 so a of 0 2 3 I have momentarily commented this line so I am printing a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 a of 3 in square brackets let us see how this executes this is how it executes <coughs> now I want to show you something if you want to learn more about lot of this uh, JavaScript tutorial go to w3schools.com this is a site you can learn it and uh, the courtesy goes to them it's a lot of good material available in WC3 schools thanks to them it's an amazing work on JavaScript tutorial but it doesn't have a video tutorial as of I know but a uh, lot of textual information you can always get it what we are trying to do is rather than text material we are trying to pr give a lot of video content so if you look here the array of 0 1 2 and 3 now 
what I'm going to do is I'm trying to access a of 4 we know that we have declared only 0 1 2 3 elements element 4 doesn't exist in this particular array so I am trying to print it let us see how it happens now let me refresh this thing this file first 0 1 2 3 are printed fourth element it says a of 4 it says undefined so whenever you are having uh, an array value which is not defined you will get into errors so make sure you are not exceeding the array limits so you can have number variables string variables boolean variables and arrays in this session we have also seen if else if else if as well as switch cases and arrays so with this we stop this particular session we will continue in the next session thank you